And now, the moment you've all been waiting for... A discharging capacitor example! And here's the problem that we're going to do. What we're going to do is assume that this switch has been closed for a long enough period of time for that capacitor to be at 10 volts. And then this switch opens up. I'm going to use blue. That's not blue. There's blue. And this switch closes. And then what we're left with is this circuit here. So it's a discharging capacitor circuit where the voltage across the capacitor is defined as being in this orientation, positive at the top, negative at the bottom. The voltage across the resistor is defined as being positive at the bottom, negative at the top, because the current needs to be, is defined as flowing into the positive terminal of the capacitor. So going in this direction. These are the general equations that we've already derived for the voltage, the capacitor voltage, the resistor voltage, and the current through the capacitor. And these are the things we want to figure out. We want to figure out the exact equations for the capacitor voltage, resistor voltage, and current. We want to figure out the values of the capacitor voltage and current at some appropriate points in time. And then we want to plot VC and IC. Okay, to approach the first problem, well, we have the basic form for the equations. The only things we need to know are Vs, which should really, it's not necessarily the source voltage, it's really the initial voltage that you have on the capacitor. So we need to determine that. Well, it's 10 volts, we, have, we already said that. And then we need to calculate this RC. And RC is also called tau, and it's the time constant for the circuit. And we'll see why it's called time constant in a second. And for this particular circuit, we have a 5 kilo ohm resistor and a 400 nanofarad capacitor. So tau, or RC, will be 5,000 ohms times 400 nanofarads. And a nano is 10 to the minus 9, so that's going to be 400 times 10 to the minus 9 farads. And this works out to 0 0.002 seconds. Well, the reason that it's seconds is it's ohms times farads, and ohms are volts per amp. And farads are coulombs per volt. These volts cancel out, and we end up with coulombs per amp. But amps, remember, are coulombs per second, so then this works out to seconds. These coulombs cancel, and the seconds comes on the top, so we end up with seconds. So that RC, or that time constant, is 0 0.002 seconds. So now we can start plugging these numbers into the actual expression. So Vc of t, well the initial voltage is 10, and this Rc is 0 0.002. And with 0 0.002 on the bottom we can bring that up to the top to give us 10 e to the negative 500 t. The inverse of 0 0.002 is 500. So Vr of t basically the same thing, except the polarity is opposite from the capacitor voltage. And then finally the current. Remember we've defined the current as flowing in that direction, but it's negative, so the current is actually going that way. So we have 10 volts, the initial voltage, divided by the resistance of 5 kilo ohms. 10 over 5 kilo ohms, 10 over 5,000 is 0 0.002, just coincidentally the same as the value here for the time constant. So 0 0.002 is, is milliseconds, or milliamps. So negative 2 e to the minus 500 t milliamps. And the units for these, of course, are volts. So the next thing to figure out is the voltage and the current values for a number of different appropriate points. So those appropriate points are going to be based on the time constant, and they're going to be equal to the time constant or then integer multiples of the time constant. So we want to, of course, choose t of 0, but the two, two different zeros we want to choose. t of 0 minus, so that's the instant right before this switch opens and this switch closes. t of 0 plus, so that would be the instant that that switch closes. And then we're going to choose 0 0.002 seconds. That is because that's the, the first time constant, the first value of tau. Oops. 002. And then we want to go with 2 tau, so 004 
then 3 tau is 0, 0, 006, 4 tau is 0, 0, 0.008, and 5 tau is 0, 0.010. 0. So we're going at, at steps of tau, 2 tau, 3 tau, 4 tau, and 5 tau. And, and the reason that we're choosing those values is because if we look at this part of the expression, e to the negative t over tau, if we've chosen t to be multiples of tau, then we're going to end up with, well, this one's just e to the 0. We're going to end up with e to the minus 1, e to the minus 2, e to the minus 3, e to the minus 4, and e to the minus 5. And this gives us these different time steps, and then we'll have that different amount of, of voltage discharge at, at each one of those time steps. Um, I'm going to write out the values that each one of these are going to be, and then that will be the multiplying factor that we'll have to multiply by the 10 or by the 2 to give us the, the voltage or current that we're looking for. Okay, well, we have these multiplying factors, these values that we're going to multiply by the 10 or the 2 to give us the voltage and the current. And so the first voltage is 10, of course, this is in volts, and that is in milliamps. So we'll have 10, and then because we're using 10, this is either, these are easy multiplications and ones that we can do in our head, 3.68. And then the current, of course, is also going to decrease by the, by the same factors. So here are the appropriate values for the voltage across the capacitor and current through the capacitor at all of these different time steps. And we only went up to 5 tau because once you've gotten to 5 tau, the voltage across the capacitor is so low you can basically ignore it. And the current through it is, is basically so low that you can ignore it. It's at 0.6% of what it was initially. And of course, it's going to continue to discharge. It can, it's going to go on and on and on and, and approach zero. But these values are so low that some DMMs won't even be able to measure them. And finally, the last thing I wanted to do was plot out these values of the voltage and the current as they're changing over time. And what you could do is you've got five six different points here for those capacitor voltage and the capacitor currents and you could draw out those four points and then connect the dots and then you'll see the line but i've done this i've put these equations in excel and and calculated for a lot more points so we get a much smoother graph and you can see the voltage for the current here and the the voltage for the capacitor here and the current through the capacitor here and you can see they have both they both have the same shape it's just they have different starting values, and of course, they're talking about totally different types of units. And if you want to see where I derive these equations, you can check out the video here. If you want to see more videos about capacitors, you can see those here. And finally, thank you so much for watching these videos. I look forward to seeing you next time. Remember to keep focused and have fun.